it's um it's early <laughs> and this is why I don't do landscapes but I've been trying all over winter to try and uh, get a shot down at Frinton on Sea of a building and um, because of lockdown just not been able to do that so I'm gonna go off now the clocks have just changed so it's still 5:20 in the morning but I get there about half an hour before sunrise and see if I can get a shot of this very old art deco building and hopefully the light will be good but yeah very early and um, yeah, why well, don't do landscapes getting up at this time in the morning we'll see how it is when we get there A few mad people also out and about this early, strangely heading to the coast too. So here we are, Frinton on Sea, a beautiful morning and still in time for the sunrise thankfully. I have bought limited equipment for this as I knew what I was already doing. So just the X100 with a 23mm fixed lens which is a 35mm equivalent. I'll take out a polarizer as well as I have windows to shoot but I actually think I want reflections but we'll see how that looks. And finally my tripod just to steady things down and as always it will slow me down and allow me for some thinking time. Here I'm just checking a couple of locations working on an arc in front of the house just to see where I'm happy with the composition. Now there is a little bit of disappointment as the last time I saw this which is probably just over a year ago I guess and it was all freshly painted and I was hoping that maybe there was going to get something looking fairly similar still maybe a little bit more pristine than it is at the moment but unfortunately we do have a little bit of rain staining coming through from the roof however I do still think it's an interesting building and it's certainly worth going ahead especially after getting up so early now I do think I want some separation between that top part of the rotunda on the house there so that we get the sky behind it each side. Now while I'm waiting I will do a quick couple of test shots and just checking the current light levels although I know they're going to go up but I can get an idea of aperture and shutter speed where I want to be with that and that's allowing for a lower ISO of 200 for maximum quality on this camera. As things start to get brighter, I'm just going to have a look at this polarizing filter, just looking through that to see if it makes any difference on the reflections. But after looking at that and turning it a few times, it really is taking away too many reflections and I'm not actually getting as many as I wanted anyway. Now the sun's just coming through that horizon, so we're gonna take some shots now and I'm gonna use exposure bracketing of about a stop each side just to open things up and down. And as I'm shooting raw, it will mean I can actually choose probably just the right one I need. And there's that sun behind me just coming up. Absolutely beautiful morning out here. Now after doing all of this, I have decided to take my camera back to where I set my tripod up originally. And I do think it tidies the right hand side of the image up. So I'm going to have a couple of shots here. It brings that Art Deco building on the left hand side as well into play. Well, I'm so glad that I did this shot as well at the end. I think this is the better shot of the two. And you will see this when we get into post-production. Here we have the downloaded image files in Adobe Bridge. And we've got the sequence of shots where you can see that I bracketed the exposures and also I've got the second sequence where I moved the tripod and I've picked out two images here this one first of all from the first sequence what I was aiming for here was this gap really between these two buildings I wasn't always happy with the buildings over on the side here although I do like this flagpole coming into play it was always going to be a, a crop I think as a panoramic so I didn't worry about these down here but I shot this one and then once the sun came up, I started to see some reflections of the sun coming into play more. So I changed my viewpoint and it kind of like tidied things up on the right hand side here. It lost the gap, but this is an Art Deco building and I quite like that coming into play with the edge of the garden here. And we also get the moon coming into play as well. Here's that sun I mentioned and as I said earlier, I think I will go back at a later date when I see a fresh repaint of this and speak to the owners, show them a picture and I would like to be up there early in the morning with these windows lit from the inside and it's probably going to be before sunrise so that actually 
the light that works in this picture with that blue early morning light would be the internal lights rather than the sunrise itself. Anyway, out of the two, this is the one I prefer now and we're going to go with that. So we've got it selected in Adobe Bridge. I'm going to open it up in Camera Raw, which is Command or Control R. And here we are in Adobe Camera Raw, very similar to Lightroom if you're using Lightroom and the same with Affinity Photo, because we're going to do some basics here more than anything else. So looking at basics, let's open that basics panel. And the first thing I want to do is really fix the colour. That's not quite what I was seeing at sunrise. I shoot on auto white balance, so I'm always happy to kind of like tweak things until they're where I want them to be or how I thought they were. And really we want to see a little bit more of that sunrise coming through in the colour there. So we'll just edge up the tint till I'm really quite happy with what I saw. So that does have that feeling of the sun coming up there. So I think we'll go with the tint and leave the temperature as it is. I'm going to take the brightness up just a touch but not much. Yeah, I think that will do. It opens up the shadows, but I will need to open up a few shadows here as well, but it just helps with that. So I'm um, happy with the contrast. It's a fairly low contrast scene anyway. And looking at highlights, you know, we're never going to get the sun back there, so I'm not worried about that. There's detail in the moon, so nothing to worry about with those highlights really. And the shadows, I'm going to leave for this because just brightening it up helps. And then I'll just come back with a little bit of dodging. Yeah, white's black, so I think that's all fine. There's plenty of texture, don't need any mid-tone contrast with clarity here, no haze to worry about, and I'm happy with the vibrance and saturation. So for those of you that spend a lot of time in Photoshop, have a look and you can see a little bit of color balance, a little bit of positive exposure, and that's all needed apart from any dodging and burning really. So get things as close as you can to correct in camera. That saves a lot of time afterwards. So utilizing bracketing and getting things right in camera helps with time afterwards. Now I mentioned I've not put any contrast in here, but I am going to take a look at just a very, very shallow S curve rather than the contrast slider. And I think just a tiny little bit like that, I think that works well. If we turn that off and on, and it just adds a little bit of life into the image. Coming down to detail, this is what comes in by default, and I'm more than happy with that. The image was shot on a tripod, the lens quality is good, there's no camera shake, it's everything that it should be. So I'm going to leave all of that alone. We will do a crop, as I said, this is a panoramic to me. So I think somewhere around there, I think we will come back and look at these areas here. But before I do that, we're gonna go back and just take a look at the geometry. And let's straighten those verticals up. I'm going to go with this flagpole because that's going to be the edge, I think. So that looks good. Let's just check the horizontals. Just go on these circular parts of the building. So yeah, let's go back to that cropping. I think we've got to take this in, certainly past that pole there. I'd like this to end somewhere on this point here, so let's just rotate that and check the balance. We'll zoom out a little bit. Maybe not that far, but So I do want some of that road to come in and we can actually just burn that edge in. So 
So I quite like the volume of space here. So balance wise, the sky I think is working with this, which is the main subject. Not got too much or too little there. This is quite a dark area here. It starts to come into play really quite strong once you see this upside down and start analyzing shapes. I like what's going on here. So these shapes are coming through onto the building here. That works well. We certainly need to lighten that area of the hedge. So bring it back round, zoom in. Yeah, I think I'm really happy with the crop there. There's also just a few little bits here and there where there's some annoying marks, like this one here. So we'll just sort a few of those out. I think we'll take this pipe out here. I'm going to print this. So these little things in print, they tend to be just a little bit annoying for me. I'm going to take this out in Photoshop rather than here because I think it needs a bit more work rather than a simple kind of like healing tool there and also this little bit of black on the top there. So we've got some seagulls mess there. That's probably what some of this is actually. We'll just tidy those little bits up. Let's see if we can take this out, this um, red alarm on there, that really doesn't work, does it? Just pull that up to somewhere similar. And we'll pull that down a touch. And we'll undo that, because that didn't work. We'll come in with a smaller brush, just to sort that little bit out probably would have worked better in Photoshop. There's a little bit of wiring down here we'll get rid of. Still not happy up here so I'm going to just pop along that line there and that should sort that out. So let's have a look along the rest of it. Tiny little bit there. I think the windows are acceptable. Let's check the sky just in case we've got any dust coming through. It shouldn't be because it was shot on a fixed lens, but um, I have heard that they do sometimes allow dust in, but so far that's not happened with me. So we've got some of the wall here to sort out. And I think we'll get rid of that in Photoshop. A couple of little pieces just in the foreground here. Someone didn't move this one, we're not going to pick up a tissue. I suppose I could have kicked that out of the way, but thankfully we can fix that here. We'll go that side. A little something just in the gutter there. I think the rest of that be fine once I start burning the edges. Get rid of those while we're here. I think that will do. Let's just zoom out again. So a few little bits but it only takes a couple of minutes to get that sorted out really. Come up to the adjustment brush and we're gonna I think work on this area here and also just lighten this up a little bit. So exposure goes up for dodging. Let's get that brush down. Just check the size on that. So around about there. Just push that into there. Go back and check the exposure slider. See where we want that to be. So I think about there. Let's check that mask. So I'm just going to pull a little bit of that back, just on that road there. It's a fairly soft edge and that's what I like to work with with dodging and burning, very much like what you used to do in the darkroom. So let's just check how that looks. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I think we might put a little bit more in there, but let's go over to here. So I'm going to do that with a new brush. 
Got some positive there, it's probably going to be a bit too much, but let's see how it looks. And just wants it to be slightly lifted here. A bit of light into that fence as well. So pull that back and then up. Yeah, I quite like the way this is picking up the sunlight here, so I, I think that works well and we've not got any bad lines or gradients working on this fencing. Let's go with another new brush and I'm going to just try and open up just a little bit here. Okay, let's just check that. Yeah, about there, it's starting to glow a little bit there, so we'll actually get that eraser, make that a little bit smaller, just tone that back, and I'm going to reactivate this one again with the eraser. Just tone that back a bit. Here's actually a tiny little sunlight hitting in there, so in some ways that's quite nice that that's kissing in there. So yeah, I think that works for the main dodging and burning. Let's take a look at the sky and also that foreground, and I'm going to do that with burning in the edges. So we'll bring that exposure down. It's just a guess at this point, and we're just going to pull that in. Check that slider. I think about there's enough. We'll add, we'll add another gradient. We'll pull that into the sky. Just make that a little bit deeper. And then I'm going to dial that back. That's just a little bit too much for me. A little bit over the top. These things should be quite subtle. So I think something like that works. Let's just flip that again, zoom out, and I still think that's maybe a little bit heavy there. I would just activate that. I might just pull this up and pull that one down. Remember, we're working in upside down here, so the ups and downs are the other way. Yeah, I think about that will do it, so we'll rotate that back. Check it full screen, and I think that's all I need to do. Just zoom out again. Yeah, I think that's it. We're where we need to be on that, so we can open that up in Photoshop, do that last little bit of cloning there, and we're ready to print. So here we are in Photoshop, let's sort out these two or three little bits that need to be cloned out. So I'm going to press J on the keyboard, it will open up my healing options. So we're going to try, I think, just going with spot healing rather than content aware. I'm going to get that, if you can see, we can just get that brush down fairly small. and take that up, that's working good. I work with these sort of complex areas just at small parts at a time. It tends to work better, I think, than trying to pull out a massive chunk. And it does select smaller areas around where everything is. And just keep building up on that. Go for that last little bit. And there's a couple of tiny pieces left there. So along here, we can use the stamp tool, so S on the keyboard. We'll take a piece from over here so it doesn't look too repetitive. Make that smaller. We only want that line really to come into play. So that's good. And we'll work on this little piece of whatever this is on the roof here, I don't really know. 
So that sorts that piece out. There was a little bit down on the wall here. Spare little bit of grass or something coming from the garden there. Pick up on that railing, make sure that we get that straight. Pull that in. And that sorts that out. We could look at tidying up these weeds, but actually I think that's part of the wall. I quite like the way that does break that line up really. So um, that's all okay. After the burning in, just check any little bits on the path here. Um, little white marks can be quite annoying when we're into the darker areas. And this can work fairly quick just using the healing brush. What tends to happen, certainly with a print, I end up printing it out and then that's when you really see these things and um, you have to go back and just do a little bit more tidying up. These tiny little white spots, they are annoying. You'll certainly get away with it a bit more with something like a PDI, so if you're projecting your images. I'm not entirely happy with this white line here. It's, it's just a little bit of edge interference, something that's called edge flicker. And those two white dashes, they can do that. They can draw your eye down there. So we'll take those out and we're gonna do that, or we'll, we'll try with the healing brush, to see if it does a good job. It's a quick way of doing it. Yeah, happy with that. I think this one's going to need the cloning brush, but we'll try a little bit at the beginning here. Yeah, let's go over to the cloning brush, so S on the keyboard. I think we're going to pick up about here. See how that looks. Try this side. We are going to end up getting a little bit uneven otherwise. So this is some detailing work, so coming in closer. along that white line now. And while we're there, let's get rid of that spot. And there, a little bit right on the edge there. I think that's a natural bend there on where they've been painting, so I'm gonna leave that because it's not straight anywhere along there. Good, I think, just having a look around. And I can see, we've got over here, I took out this um, box here, but look, this one here, I think that needs to come out and I just missed that. So it's always worth checking back. So we'll go J on the keyboard. This should be able to come out all in one, hopefully. Another little bit there. Let's just check up where I had this. Yeah, I think, I'm just gonna, run a couple of lines there. Shall we leave this in? I think so. It's not 100% perfect, all of this rendering. I think we'll leave that one in, that's not so bad. Maybe that little hairline there, that will come through on the print. So really a last minute little check here. Only a little bit under there. It is a shame about all of this kind of rainwater runaway um, on this building, but in some ways that kind of like does add character to it. I did want this to be pristine and white, so I am going to come back and do that. Yeah, let's sort this little bit out here. So this is a curve. This could be a little bit more difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some patch cloning very, very quickly. All we need to do is select the marquee tool up here, M on the keyboard. It can be any shape you like. So we're going to go with a rectangle. I need to have this sort of kind of sky area here. So I think, I think we're gonna go close here. I'm just gonna select that area there. 
command J that will produce that patch for me. V on the keyboard which will bring me back to the move tool. So I can now take this patch and move it into place. It's going to need a little bit of rotation. Command or T, transform. Something like that, but we're going to go down to difference and that will help me line things up. I think around here that's looking pretty good in line. We've got the ability to fine tune this afterwards. So difference comes back to normal. We will set that. We're going to add a layer mask, but we'll press Alt on the keyboard to bring it in inverted. And then with a brush, we're going to brush onto black, so we want white down here. So D resets these and X will swap those around, and we want white for the foreground. Brush size, I currently got a massive size there, so let's pull that all the way down. And all we want to do, with 100% opacity and flow, I'm going to just paint that out. And we can see it's slightly out of line, so just clicking onto here, making sure we're on the Move tool, V, and with the cursor keys, we can just edge that into place. going to go back to brush and make sure that we are clear of that. Yeah, perfect. So that's how to sort out a curve. Just having another little look around. I think I might take these two out here. They're just all on their own. So we're going to flatten, stamp, come to here, just feed that in. There are a few more here, but I'm going to leave those, I think. They do kind of like spread themselves out. A tiny little thing here that's just a little bit annoying as well. So. Again, press Alt on the keyboard. I'm going to work very small with the brush now. Just pull that out. While we're there, take that one out as well. I'm just going to, I think, work on maybe that there. We've got a, a hairline crack on the wall. It's all out on its own. I just think it will take us there and when we start looking at it in print. So J on the keyboard for the healing tool, feed that up a little bit at a time and that comes out beautifully. Don't mind these few little bits here. Just check the rest of the wall while we're there. Because quite easily just, you know, with our images, we do miss so much when we're looking around. And um, if you put it into club competitions, it's kind of like a keen-eyed judge will pick these things up because they do tend to stand out when you're you're looking at a picture that's not yours and we tend to like get absorbed into our own images. I think we can leave that there so we're going to send that to print and we'll run off an A4 proof check that out and then see if we need to do anything else and then go with a larger A3 print. So I'm going to go with a fine art paper I'm going to go with Permajet Amiga Rag that's going to bring through some lovely texture through some of the finer details such as the sky and some parts of that rendering. So this is the A4 proof coming off. Now checking the final print there are a few things that are annoying me and I've arrowed those here. Now those little black bits on the white rendering on the tops of the roof sections, they did come through quite annoying, so I'm going to take those off in the final print. There's a little drain there that I find annoying on the left, and also there's a slab that's a little bit brighter than the others, so I'm going to just tone that down before we send it to print. I'm not going to take you through all of this, I think you've picked up on a huge amount of my cloning work within this video today. I'll do that and we'll go ahead with the final print. 
And here's the final A3 print and overall I'm really quite happy. It does come across as a very clean image even though we've got some of that rainwater wash on that top roof there. But yeah on the fine art paper I'm really happy with that. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It has been a long one, but you get to see a lot of the post-production work that I do, particularly with the cloning, and also a lot of detailing where there's a lot of things in our images at times where we just need to go back, go over it, just tidy little bits up here and there, just to try and get that image much, much cleaner for the final print.